दिस इज क्वेश्चन टेन ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग पेपर ऑफ गेट ट्वेंटी एट इन आफ्टरनून सेशन विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट करेक्ट सो देर आर फोर स्टेटमेंट गिवेन इन द क्वेश्चन वी नीड टू सिलेक्ट द इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो लेट्स चेक इच स्टेटमेंट वन बाई वन सो द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज when the water content of soil lies between its liquid limit and plastic limit the soil is said to be in plastic state so this question is from the topic of utterberg limits you may watch this lecture to explore your knowledge uh, about the utterberg limit or consistency of soil so utterberg showed that if the water content of a thick suspension of clay is gradually reduced the clay water mixtures undergoes changes from a liquid state through a plastic state and finally into a solid state the water contents corresponding to the transition from one state to another are termed as utterberg limits as you can see in this figure there are three limits the first one is uh, shrinkage limit then plastic limit and liquid limit so in this question it is written that the when the water content of soil lies between its liquid limit and plastic limit that is here liquid limit and plastic limit so the soil is said to be in plastic state so yes this statement is correct when the water content of soil lies between plastic limit and liquid limit the soil is said to be in plastic state so this option is correct so option a is correct now option b is bosinesk theory is used for the analysis of stratified soil so bosinesk theory is used to uh, find the stress component at a depth z below the surface of a semi infinite solid due to a point load acting at the surface of the semi infinite soil so in the bosinesk theory there were some assumptions and one of the assumptions was the soil mass is assumed to be elastic isotropic homogeneous and semi infinite so we assume the soil is homogeneous the property of the soil is same so we cannot say uh, that bosinesk theory is used for the analysis of a stratified soil so it is not the correct statement it is the not the correct statement the bosinesk theory is used for the homogeneous soil where the properties of soil is same throughout the soil so it is the incorrect option option b is the incorrect option now let's move towards option c c is the inclination of a stable slope in cohesive soil can be greater than its angle of internal friction so it is talking about the stable slope in cohesive soil so we have the formula for cohesive soil for finding the factor of safety so you can see this is the formula and for dry cohesion less soil that is c is equal to 0 and dry this is dry for a uh, dry condition and co uh, cohesion less soil the factor of safety is defined as the ratio of tan phi dash by tan beta dash so obviously the factor of safety should be always greater than 1 so here we can say for dry cohesionless soil the uh, tan phi dash is always greater than tan beta it means the angle of internal friction should always be greater than angle of slope in case of dry cohesionless soil but for cohesive cohesive soil it is not like that so in this statement it is written that for cohesive soil the stable slope that is beta can be greater than beta can be greater than its angle of internal friction beta can be greater than phi for cohesive soil okay so for cohesive soil beta can be greater than phi but for dry cohesionless soil we know that phi dash is always greater than beta if this statement was uh, written for non cohesive or cohesionless soil then that statement was 
uh, incorrect but it is written that the inclination of stable slope in cohesive soil can be greater than its angle of internal friction so this statement is again correct so this is the correct statement now the fourth option uh, is given that the for saturated dense fine sand after applying overburden cor correction if the standard penetration test value exceeds 15 dilatancy correction is to be applied so this question is from the topic of standard penetration test so just quickly recall about the correction in the spt value so whatever the spt number we get from the field it is to be corrected before uh, they are used in empirical correlation and design charts so the spt value is always corrected so is 2131 1981 recommends some correction so there are two corrections which is uh, recommends the first one is effect of overburden pressure and after uh, getting the uh, corrected value after uh, overburden pressure correction we need to again correct it for the effect of dilatancy so here the formula for the n dash n dash is the correction after overburden pressure and n is the spt value which we get from the field and cn is the correction for overburden pressure cn so n dash equal to cn into n now the formula for cn you can see in this screen now if this n dash value is smaller than equal to 15 then there is no need to go for correction for dilatancy but if the value of n dash is greater than 15 we need to again correction uh, for dilatancy in this spt n value and the formula for spt n value the final spt n value or uh, you can say the corrected n value is equal to 15 plus 0.5 n dash minus 15 where n dash is the corrected n value after overburden pressure so here you can see uh, the correction for dallas tensi is uh, only needed when the n dash is greater than 15 or in uh, statement it is also written if the standard penetration test value exceeds 50 dialer tensi correction is to be applied so this statement is correct so we can say option d is correct option c is correct option b is incorrect uh, statement and option a is again correct so you can say option b this option b is not correct so option b is the correct answer for this question thank you